Hey guys, welcome to the Nook Pod. Thanks for tuning in. It's Owen McGurk and Kelly Squires giving you a real estate update. And maybe we'll talk about 2020. How much time do we have? <laughs> Can you handle the truth? You cannot. What the hell happened? A lot of things. I mean, when was the last time you shook a hand professionally? Damn it. I haven't shook anybody's hand in a long friggin' time. And that actually pisses me off because I'm a big time handshaker. Me too. I'm a good handshaker. What's your handshake like? Well, we can't try it out. <laughs> so <laughs> it'd be nice to just like get in there and get a grip. Good. But that's not going to happen. I worked on mine, you know? Did you really? I did. Okay. That says a lot about you. Okay. Interesting. It also says a lot about you that you worked on it. <laughs> like how was this a daily activity? Like I felt like my, my original handshake was a little lackluster. Uh, and then, I mean, you have to make decisions. Like, are you a, a one-time shaker? Are you a firm one -er? You know, or are you like, are you a... Oh, I see. Like, you, know? you, you do the tomahawk? Some people are like, hello. <laughs> or some are like, here you go, right? How about the one, two, three? Okay, why are there so many buyers? I think we know there's a lot of people leaving the city. There's this whole work from home movement. Huge. Um, I love that. Crazy, historically low interest rates. It's right. like... The perfect storm. It's and the perfect storm. if you're going to leave the city, you may want to try. I mean, everywhere is booming, don't get me wrong. But in Durham specific, we're benefiting from the fact that we were some of the most affordable, or if not the most, some of the most affordable housing. A lot of people understand the timing. Right. And a lot of people just are not worried about that. Do you think that they might regret in 18 months from now that they didn't sell right now? Or will, will it be even higher than it is i know it's so tricky i still think we have some room to move up me too but i don't think it's going to look like it did in 2020 i mean we're what 21 and a half percent up in 12 months yeah highly unlikely that's going to happen again um what factor will bring it down or even just slow it or level it yeah what factor could the vaccine be a factor could um I, I more inventory is going to be the factor the main yes. factor is going to be more inventory yes right but why and why and when are people more comfortable? Mm -hmm. And everybody should kind of like brace themselves because if there was supposed to be 600 more houses on the market this month and last month and the month after this one, mm -hmm. um, those sellers are still going to sell at some point. Exactly. That, this is the point, right? And with the second wave of the virus, the numbers dropped again. So that is a clear indicator that the people clear catalyst. do not want people in their homes. They don't want to open those doors to the public. That's Understandably right. so. So that's obviously a factor, but I think you have really two other factors. Um, a lot of who should be our sellers right now yep. are our buyers who can't find a home to buy. Well, it's exactly. a cycle. That's right. <laughs> right? So say um, that again for the people at home. You know, if, if all, all of our sellers are currently our buyers, right? That's right. If I can't find them a home to buy, they will not list. They can't move anywhere, even laterally. No. So there's nothing on the market to buy. So it's it's creating such a backup that yeah. uh, you're right. The sellers now have turned to buyers that can't find anything. Exactly. And so it's a, it's a crazy cycle. It's that a you're crazy in. cycle. It's a crazy so, loop. So, you know, if I can't find them a house so that they can list their home, then your buyer doesn't have an opportunity now to buy their home, right? That's right. That's right. And, you know, are we talking about a slippery slope here? Is it more dangerous than maybe we're thinking? Or is it maybe, you know, the, the answers are right around the corner. But just mm -hmm. so we can kind of understand the numbers a little better. The greater Oshawa area, Durham region, has like, what, 600,000 people? Yeah, I think so, right? I'm pretty sure it's right around yeah. there. 600,000 people. There's 287, 286 active houses on the market. Talk about like a housing shortage. Right, exactly. It's insanity. That's it insanity. Really is. Well, you know what? It's funny because I have had a few clients this year where I represented them coming from the city. And their simple explanation to me was they just looked on realtor.ca and kind of did the circle around the city. And then they found the best value out on the east side of the 401. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Which to me, I'm like, but it's always been like that. Yeah. Did you just look now? I think so. <laughs> I feel like that's. You know, it's like, did, did this just happen? Okay, let's flip. 
let's flip it to the other side. If it's not likely that we're going to see a ton of inventory on the market anytime soon because of the factors we've just talked about. Exactly. People are scared for their health and they can't find anything to buy. Let's not forget the fact that even though they're selling their homes for increased values, they're also purchasing at a, a massive premium as well. So exactly. simple affordability just isn't there. But I think it's more likely that we'll see buyer exhaustion. Yes. We'll see people just simply tapped out from affordability. You can almost not buy a house under $600,000 right now in Durham region. I mean, there's some options. Slim pickings. Slim. So at what point in the G- the GTA's typical double income household likely, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not even we're not even talking about single buyers here. Likely double income households at what's their threshold? I've never seen right? this crap going on so long. <laughs> like what the long hell? I'm, I'm, exhausted I'm exhausted myself. <laughs> Just said I'm exhausted God, at the same time. I'm taking off oh. my mask. Oh no, no. <laughs> not yet. No, We're I can't so take close. It. We're so close, but you know what? I'm sanitizing. No. I'm making sure that my mask is on. I'm trying to be a like a, you know, cooperative member of society without yes. actually holding too much of a grudge against it or or anyone. You know, there's sort of like this like this cloud of COVID over everything we're doing and saying and building and, you know. That's right. Everything we're doing. I think everybody hit exhaustion like six months ago. Yeah. Seriously. Here we are. Still you driving know? along like an old battle axe. Seriously. So so I think that's it. I think I think our market is more likely to be affected by buyer exhaustion and affordability issues. That's right. Than anything else. Yes. But we'll see. We'll see we what the see. factor that take bets. Listen, that was a great talk. It was a great analysis of what's currently happening in the market and yes. the review of what was a very um, tumultuous year for everybody here. It was. And not just here in Durham or Toronto or Canada, but the world together globally. So uh, mm-hmm. thank you, Kelly. No problem. I will Thanks. see you next time when we discuss what else <laughs> is going on in the world. The new inventory. The yes. new inventory. Yes. All right. Well, you have a good night. That was a great conversation. Yes.